go. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Helping Dollars Make Sense. My name is Rachel Bronstein. I founded a company this year called Life's Jam. It's a company to help us uh, touring music for professionals simplify their life and finances. When COVID happened, I was really worried about the people that put the show on. Um, there's the artists, but then there's lots and lots of people that make an event happen. And I knew that they were out of work. Um, really, the industry came to a standstill and a lot of them had trouble pivoting. And so I wanted to see if there was a way I could help um, those touring folks that were out there. And in the process of doing that, I realized that a big problem in the industry was that a lot of the professionals didn't have the financial literacy knowledge to run their business in addition to their passion or their trade. So um, a lot of the industry is made up of freelancers, 70%. And so you really have to run a small business while also doing your job. And a lot of people don't have the tools, the tips, the tricks uh, to do that successfully. So I'm hoping that I can bring, shed some light on the industry and make a difference for people. Um, just to tell you a little bit about me, I started my, I went to Boston University and graduated with a finance degree, um, but preferring to go the untraditional route, I started working at NBC in production finance. You can find me on Instagram at Life's Jam. Feel free to message me. I love helping people. I love helping people that are kind of taking charge and figuring out what they need to do and who they need to meet. And so um, feel free to connect. Okay, so what are we gonna try to cover? Well, the first thing we cover is what is personal finance? Why do I need to know about it? A lot of people think that the creative brain can't handle all of the finances. Um, and so they're just not good at it. But I really think everyone can get a handle on their finances. I think you'll live a happier and more successful life. You'll have um, funds when you need them to pay for the things that you need. I'm not talking about a lavish life, but your, your necessities and some of your wants. So we're also going to dive into what an employee is versus a contractor, how the freelance business works. We'll touch on debt and credit. And we'll, it, in figuring out how to generate more income, we need to make sure you're presenting your best self. So we'll talk about that too. And then I'll take some questions and answers. And I'll go a little bit quickly just so we can make sure I cover all the slides. You can go to the next one. Okay, so what is personal finance? Personal finance includes anything from managing your money, budgeting, investing, insurance, saving, retirement, when you don't have to worry about it yet, but estate planning. So all of that, any kind of financial service is included in personal finance. Next slide. Okay, so how do you get started? Let's say you're 20 and the idea of finances is overwhelming or you haven't had to pay for anything yet. So there's definitely things you can do now that set yourself up for success. So the first one is establishing good habits and good savings habits. A lot of times savings is an afterthought and you need to make it a forethought. So you get your paycheck and we pay our bills and we spend the money that we have as extra. And then you say, hmm, can I save a little? And that's hard. So if you take savings off of the top and then work with what's left, you can really set yourself up for success. And we'll dive into what falls into savings in a minute. And the other thing is, is figure out your goals. Whenever we save for a purpose, we're more likely to want to contribute to it. So let's say you're saving for a piece of photography equipment. Instead of going out with your friends, maybe for the third time in a month, or maybe you wanted to buy that video game, but you really want that piece of photography equipment, by setting up a savings account and labeling it and transferring money in and automatically transferring money in works a lot better. But even just making transfers into the account, you can really see that progress you're making towards that goal. And the other thing that we need to do that not everybody does is budget and track your spending. So whenever we watch our spending, just like if you're dieting and you're watching what you're eating, when we watch our spending, we spend more mindfully. We, we think about it for a minute. We don't um, impulse shop as much. I'm not saying we don't, but we're more careful with our spending. And then the other thing that I think needs to start when you're young is setting up an emergency fund. So maybe you're responsible for your car and you get a flat tire and it's $150 or you need new brakes or you just moved in with friends and you rent an apartment, but you have an expense that you need and you don't have it in your budget. 
I think having that emergency fund is key because what happens is, is when you don't have that, you put it on a credit card. And if you can't pay that bill, now you're running a balance on your credit card. And now it's accruing interest, which means the credit card company is charging you money on top of the money that you um, used to buy the item. And so you're paying more for that. And people, maybe one thing's not a problem, maybe two items not a problem, but people get into a really bad cycle. And credit card debt is a huge problem in America. And I just want to set you up right so you um, can kind of tackle that and pay your bills every month and not um, get into that situation. And building that emergency fund is key. And then the other thing we really want to do is when you're young, typically it's when you get your first job, you want to save for retirement. And so if you get a job and you work at a company that has is hiring you as an employee, getting a 401k plan might be part of your benefits. But in the music industry, so many people are starting out on their own or they're getting set up as a freelancer contractor because that's how their area of the business within the music industry works. And when you do that, no one's teaching you how to do these things. And it's really, really important. So we're going to dive into retirement in a few minutes. Next slide. Okay, so how do I make a budget? A budget um, can be overwhelming. You might not know where to start. But the general rule of thumb in the industry is 50, 30, 20. So 50% goes to your needs, 30% goes to your wants, and 20% goes to your savings. If you're a freelancer, you need to save for taxes. I can explain that more in a minute, but I suggest you set up a separate savings account that you move money right off the top. Um, when you're more established, my rule of thumb is 25%, but you can look up what your tax bracket would be. Um, when you're starting out, if you're not making that money, maybe you can get away with saving a little less, but my rule of thumb is 25%. So you would move that money um, into... Uh, savings. And so you don't worry about it. And then you take your wants, your needs, and you have your leftover money. I actually love having three accounts. I love having a checking account for my bills, a checking account for my discretionary spending, and a savings account. So you don't want your bill money and your discretionary money to be commingled because when there's a pot of money sitting in the account, we tend to spend it. And sometimes we don't have a bill that's due every month. So we might have an expense, and in theory, on our budget, we should be moving money every month into an account, so when we get that bill, we can pay it. But a lot of people don't do that. So if you keep those two accounts separately, you really, truly will spend within your means. Next slide. Okay, so here's my example. You have a part-time job at the music store. You get paid $10 an hour, and you work 20 hours a week, and you need to pay for dining, gas, uh, your phone bill, and you want to save for some music equipment. Next slide. So gross pay, and I apologize if you guys know all of this already. I'm just giving you the basics in case you don't know. Gross pay is your salary before anything's taken out. So it's $10 an hour times 20 hours a week times four weeks, which comes to 800. Now you're an employee, so your employer has taken out your income taxes and they've also taken out social security and Medicare taxes. So your net pay or your take home pay is 658. So right off the bat, if we do our 50, 30, 20 calculation, you're moving 131 into your savings account, 329 is in your checking account, one for your bill pays, and 197 is your wants. So you really know what money you have to work with for your wants. Next slide. So what falls into savings? You might've heard the term and you might think that Saving is when you save up for a thing, but savings actually encompasses a lot. So we talked about the importance of an emergency fund. Those are all these unexpected expenses. So when you're young, it could be you broke your phone, you lost your phone. All of a sudden, um, you need to come up with money for a trip. Um, it could be for new equipment. It could be there's a zillion things we want to save for. And I love having buckets. And in this digital world, there are savings accounts that you can make virtual buckets. So you'd have one savings account and then you label your money with different things. So you can collect for different things. And then we talked about the importance of retirement accounts. And then if you've done all of that savings, then there are savings where you can invest your money in the market. But we don't have to dive into that today. Next slide. Okay, so now you're 24, you just graduated, and you're about to take your first job. 
I don't care if you're an employee or your contractor. It would be amazing if you could start to take some of your paycheck and save for retirement. And the reason why, why saving for retirement is so valuable when you're young is compounding interest. So compounding interest is when you contribute, you earn interest on your money, then you have a new total in your bank account. Then you earn interest on that new amount. So the part you contributed, the interest, and then your Oops, then you're earning interest on top of that. And that keeps building over the years. So in these three scenarios, they gave the exact same money every year. But because scenario, uh, Jack, who's in blue, because he started when he was 25, he's earned over $500,000. And by the way, this chart is actually super conservative. This has um, these folks earning 7%. Um, but in the market, you could earn eight or nine or even upwards of 10%. Um, and I'm not going to get deep into investing, but there's a huge potential here. And I don't want you guys to miss it because I really think that even if it's little, just establish, establishing those habits. And of course, it's a little easier when your company sets it up and walks you through everything. But I have a lot of um, information. Feel free to message me. I can send you guys links that help if, if this is something you're interested in, in starting this retirement account on your own if you're a freelancer. Next slide. Okay, so what's the difference? Maybe you've heard the term before, employee versus contractor. Maybe um, you're in high school and this you're not in this world yet. So let me just give you the lowdown. An employee, you work for one, one company. They You fill out what's called a W-4. It gives your personal information. It tell, it, you're telling the employer how much you want deducted for taxes. They offer you benefits, 401k, medical insurance, not always, um, but they can. There's usually a benefit package. And at the end of the year, you get what's called the W-2 and you report to the government and they've already taken out for taxes and it's easy. Okay. The independent contractor world is a little more complicated. And because so much of the music industry is made up of their world, I am trying to shed light and bring awareness and bring some tips and tricks to make that easier for people. So when you're an independent contractor, you're responsible. Well, first of all, you can work for multiple employers. You give them a form, which is called um, a W-9. It lists your company, your ID number, um, your information of how you file taxes. And then at the end of the year, they send you what's called a 1099. And that's for any any vendor that pays you more than $600 a year. So you can go to the next slide. So in the freelance business, there's a lot to keep track of. You really are running your own business. You must keep track of your income and expenses, that's your inflows and your outflows. Usually you have to set up a tax ID, although you can use your social security number. Um, in some cases you need to register in the state. So we're not gonna get into it fully here, um, but you do wanna make sure you get the resources to set your company up correctly. You wanna make sure that you open a business checking account because it's really important to keep these things separate. I find a lot of times people don't keep track of their expenses, don't save their receipts, and they don't have that checking account. And it really makes um, preparing your tax return and keeping all your ducks in a row difficult. The other thing you're going to be responsible is setting up your insurance and setting up your account for retirement. Next slide. So some of the, um, these are my favorite apps, and this applies more to if you're running a freelance business, but the personal budgeting apps, uh, there's Mint, there's YNAB, there's Tiller Money. Um, you can use a spreadsheet, you can use a Google sheet. It doesn't matter as long as you're keeping track of it. Um, professionally, if you're just starting out and you need to start invoicing, um, invoicing someone, Wave, the software is free. Um, I'm a QuickBooks um, kind of pro, but when you're starting out, maybe you just need the basics of WAVE. Uh, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what you are using as long as you stick with it. And my rule of thumb is to look at your finances once a week. I like to down my, you can download your finances into what's called a CSV file, which is basically Excel and keep track of it that way. Or you can use one of these programs as long as you're downloading 
and categorizing everything once a week, you really can say it, stay ahead of it. I've talked to industry professionals who say it takes them two weeks at the end of the year when they're preparing their tax return because they didn't do it while they, while they went. So it becomes a headache. It becomes a thing that nobody wants to do. And it just gets pushed off and pushed off. And you're probably missing money to that way because you haven't kept up with it. You might be missing an expense that you could have deducted. So you get a tax credit for these business expenses um, when their purchase is made for your business. Next slide. Okay, so what is credit? Credit is um, the ability to get things now that you pay for later. And all of that information about your borrowing gets reported on credit reports. And there's three agencies that report that. Everyone can go to uh, www.annualcreditreport.com to get free access to your credit reports once a year from each of the three reporting agencies. Right now, due to COVID, they're letting you get it every week until April 2022. You can go to the next slide. There's the list of the three agencies. So the agencies take all of your information about your credit history and they um, and they share it with businesses. In turn, you are given a credit score. Next slide. Your credit score can range all the way from you know, 300 to 850, 850 being the best. And you might also be thinking, I don't need to borrow money right now. Why do I care about my credit score? Well, establishing your credit score with you when you're young is also a huge win. It's kind of like the thing you don't need until you need it. And then when you need it, you really need it. So you can go to the next slide. The things that make up your score are number one, paying your bills on time. I, Try really, really hard. If you stick with that budgeting and you get on a great savings habit and you build that emergency fund and you spend within your means, you should be able to pay your bills on time. And it's um, and if you need to figure out a side gig or another way to generate income or you need to look at your expenses and figure out a way to trim, that's fine. But a lot of your score is made up from paying bills on time. The next thing is amounts owed. So they look at how much credit you have and how much you're borrowing. So if you have a $10,000 limit and you're only borrowing $500, like that's, that's the balance that's on your credit card, you have pretty good um, percentage. You're not using a lot of your credit. But what happens when people get into financial distress is they max out their credit. So they use all that available credit and that greatly affects your credit store. The other thing that's really important when you're young is that part of your score is made up for how long you've had your credit. So if you have a credit card that you opened when you were 18 from the bank, and I, I recommend no fee cards when you're young um, because you wanna be able to keep it open as long as possible. So if you have that bank account that you opened when you're 18 and you've been paying at that credit and you've been paying that credit card bill on time every month, when you're 30, and you need to apply for a mortgage or you want to buy a car or whatever, you've established that length of credit history and that's looked at as very positive. Next slide. So here are all the ways that building your score when you're young are important. So I mentioned applying for credit, um, renting an apartment. Sometimes they do a credit check if you don't have credit because a lot of young people don't have credit yet. They might um, ask for a larger security deposit Sometimes if you're coming off your parents' phone plan and establishing a phone plan of your own, they'll check your credit and you might have to put a deposit down. If you need to get insurance on your own, sometimes when you get a new job, believe it or not, they check your credit. And refinancing student loans, they check your credit. Next slide. So here's four examples of four people that took out car loans. So loan one, um, they decided that they they were gonna buy the $20,000 car, but they were gonna put a 20% down payment. So they were gonna give $4,000 in cash. They got a great rate, they have great credit, and they're only gonna take a four-year loan. Then example two, they're also at 3%, but they took a five-year loan. And loan three, they took 3%, but they're taking a seven-year loan. And loan four is actually a client that I'm helping right now in the music community. He has terrible credit. And he has a car loan for seven years at 13%. Next slide. 
So the winner is Credit Matters. <laughs> he is paying $9,000 more for the car um, with a monthly payment equal to loan one and loan one is done in four years and owns her, and owns his or her car for $9,000 less. Um, one, one word to the wise, if you are going to buy a car, never give the amount that you're willing to spend. So let's say you've created your budget. Don't say I have $250 to spend towards a car because that car salesman is going to find a way to craft you a deal that you pay $250 a month. You might be paying it over seven years instead of four or five years. So you always have to look at the total that you're going to spend on the thing that you're purchasing. It can be really hard. So take somebody that um, is supportive of knowledge, knowledgeable and can help you. Next slide. Okay, diving into debt. Um, debt is a huge problem in America. It's a huge problem in this age group of 18 to 24. The number one cause of debt in this age group is student loan debt. I think a lot of times people take student loan debt and they borrow more than they can pay back within a reasonable period of time. So the rule of thumb is if you need to take student loan debt, and a lot of people do, most people do, um, I think it's it's at 67% of people need to borrow for college. Um, the rule of thumb is to take the no more debt than what you think you can make in your first year out of college, the annual salary. So if you think that your first job out of college will pay you $40,000, theoretically, you shouldn't borrow more than the $40,000. In theory, they're saying that $40,000 will take you 10 years to pay back. So about 10% of your check would be going to student loan debts. They say any more than taking 20% of your check to pay back student loan debt is too much. It's too much of a burden. Um, so that's just my little tip there. And not the second biggest debt at this age group is credit card debt. So learn how to use a credit card wisely, pay your bills off each month. If you're nervous that it's too easy to spend on the credit card, you can move to a cash envelope system or a virtual envelope system where you designate um, the YNAB um, app is really good for that. It assigns all of your money is assigned. You've told your money what it's for down to the dollar. Um, if you like and want to build your credit, but you're still nervous about having a credit card, you can pay off your credit card every week. They don't care how many payments you send them. So if you want to spend and then pay it off and spend and pay it off, that's fine. The other thing that I'll suggest is never wait until the day the credit card is due. I know people who have scheduled it to be paid automatically on the day it's due. And then sometimes the payment doesn't hit 5, 5 p.m. and they're very stressed out. And I hate late fees. Late fees and bank fees are the worst. And it's not that you can't once in a while get them taken off, but it takes a lot of your time. They usually won't do it more than once. And it's a pain. So schedule that payment to hit a day or two before. And, and, and this is not something that you should have to deal with right now, but I just want to caution you uh, because there are a lot of freelancers in the music industry. Find a way to afford health insurance because medical debt is the number one cause of bankruptcy in America. So medical debt can be large. So take good care of yourself. We just came off a wellness panel where we were talking about wellness in the industry and and you have to take care of yourself um, before you can give to others. And actually health and financial wellness really go together because if you're not taking care of yourself well um, and you're having more disease or um, doctor's visits or problems or whatnot because you're not taking good care of yourself, it becomes more expensive. So it really does go hand in hand. Next slide. Okay, so after you've talked about credit and expenses and, and debt and all of that stuff, we want to be able to generate our best selves and we want to earn what we can and we want to um, be financially sound so that we can live our best life. I'm, um, I have a quote and it's at the end that life is our target, money is our tool. By no means is... Um, I'm not promoting making money and making money and making money, um, especially in a creative world. I, I know that there's more important things to me than making money. So I just want to make sure that you can live your best life. And we do need money to in order to do that. So um, I have spent a lot of time um, putting together all the things that I've worked over the years. And then some of these things, um, 
you're in charge of your own happiness. No one else is responsible. If you want to get up and do it every day, you do it. So it can be hard in this business to get no's. You have to pick yourself up again and you can put stuff out there and get no responses. So I like to um, try different eggs in different baskets and hope one materializes and then some don't. And I do a lot of research. I go onto webinars. I find out who the important people are to talk to. And I don't ask them for their time necessarily because time is very valuable and it's hard to give your time all the time. But find out, are they doing a podcast? Are they looking for interns? Um, can you comment on their posts about a webinar you watched and you provide some insight into what you think? And then they start to see your name um, pop up a lot. Can you volunteer in this industry? Maybe you haven't gotten started or you haven't gotten paid or you haven't found that perfect job. I started working at festivals. It was amazing. I met so many people and one relationship built on the next. Um, I believe in giving more than you take. And um, on the money side, establishing the good habits, sticking to a budget, and really importantly is creating multiple re revenue streams. And there's a great book out. I'm going to drop the link in the chat. I have some other um, links I'll provide you guys. There's a great um, girl on LinkedIn. She shares her top tips for creating the best LinkedIn profiles, which have made a huge difference. So um, I recommend all of those things. And I think that can, oh, I might have one or two more slides actually. Go to the next one. Okay, so my takeaways are if you've absorbed all of it and it's too much, start simple. Start with a savings account and start putting money away automatically. If you're 22 plus and you've graduated college and you're not working at a company that offers you a 401k plan, set up a retirement account. If you're um, offered a 401k plan and your company matches, which means every dollar you put in, they put in a dollar, that's usually up to a certain percentage, like 5%. Try to do the match. It's free money. Create your own budget. And I love tapping into free resources. I have a ton. So if you've shared your information with me um, on the link that I dropped at the beginning, I'm happy to send you some more free resources. Thank you, guys. And you can find me, direct message me. I love responding to everybody. I'm happy to help. So I guess I will take questions now if that works, Alexa. Yeah, let me see if I can get out of the screen share here. I've got two computers going. <laughs> All right, I did see a question come in from Dom. Yes. Asked, um, what if the artists are abroad? So are there, and is there anything different when artists are international that they need to look out for? Um, they definitely should. I, I don't know the international uh, laws. A lot of this stuff is um, similar as far as keeping track of your finances and being financially responsible and spending within your means. And But as far as like the specifics, I don't know. I definitely would tap into a CPA, an accountant, it's, especially if you're traveling with music and you're getting paid from different countries. It's very important to understand what the rules are. Um, and do that correctly. Awesome. Um, let's see. That might be it. Does anyone have any last minute questions in the group? I know I talked really fast. And you know what? I'm going to drop some of the links um, that I was talking. Oh, you know what? There is a great webinar that was started by an, in, an HR industry exec during COVID. And it's called Who Knew the Most Important People in the Room? And they bring music executives in every week and do these webinars that are amazing. I haven't even been able to keep up with all of them, but they're all on YouTube and um, they're awesome. So I suggest watching some of them. And then the other thing, if you wanna get into tour management, um, it's called Tour Management 101, and these are all tour managers that pivoted during COVID, and they created a tour management class for free. Basically, they get online. I think they've created 100 episodes or something like that, close to it, and they teach you all about touring, and it's amazing and super informative, and it's free. All right. Since we have a little bit of extra time, I've got a question for you. 
Oh, sure. Um, let's say somebody listening has never budgeted or never saved before. What's one tip that you'd um, give to them to get them started? Just so getting the right bank accounts is the first tip. So if you only have a checking account, ask the bank if they can give you a savings account. And then once you have that savings account, can you move $20 in there? Like, will it break the bank? Will you not be able to pay your bills? Can, and then the next step is, can you automate that $20? So every Friday, or let's say, or once a month, could once a month, $30 go into that savings account and start really slowly um, with money. A lot of times when we move it, we don't remember it. We live without it. It's just that it's hard for us to physically move it. it something stops us. So if you can automate that transaction and then say, you know what, 30 wasn't terrible. Let me try 40 and, you know, just get in those good habits. As far as budgeting, you can't budget without knowing where you're spending your money. So the only note, way to know where you're spending your money is to track it. So you can track it by downloading it onto, if you don't want to use any software, so there are free softwares, but let's say you don't want to use any budgeting software, just download it into an Excel file. The CSV is what it's going to say. And, it can, um, and then you just go line by line and tag. We're tagging categories. So just say what it's for. And if, you don't even have to get specific. You can say need or want. So there's a lot of things we need. We need to pay our rent. We need to pay our electric bill. We need to pay our phone bill. Do we need to pay for our Apple subscription? I don't know, you know? So that might have to go for the want for now and then see how the numbers flow. So I feel like you need to do that also before you make a commitment to a new apartment rent or um, a new car. Like those are big purchases and you really want to make sure that you're not setting yourself up to be house poor or car poor and not be able to go out anymore or whatever. But also tracking it gives empowers you like you then get to make the decision. Do I want to go out with my friends and spend $40? Or do I want to put the $40 to something else? Like maybe it's an experience. Maybe you're choosing a concert over drinking. Like, I don't know, but like, then it gives it, it, it lets you decide you're in the driver's seat then. Gotcha. Makes sense. So really knowing where your money's going. Um, yeah. So I just, automating. I, I see a question in here from Tiffany Heron yeah. with the retirement plan at the bank. Is there an actual name for it? Or would I just ask for a retirement plan? Um, so if you're a, so if you work for a company, they, and you're an employee, they would let you know if they had a plan for, um, if you're on your own and you need to figure it out, um, you would set up either what's called an IRA or there's something called a solo 401k. You would want to get some, um, professional advice on how to set it up, but those would be the names of it. Awesome. Oh, she says, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No problem, Tiffany. All right. Well, we've got a few more minutes. Um, okay. Let's see. If you, How about I've got another question for you. Sure. Um, if somebody has never borrowed before and they're looking into their credit score, um, what, what makes up that score if they've never taken out a loan before? And um, how can they start to build that? Right. So the first thing you're going to want to do is check your credit report and see if anything's on your credit report. When you're young and it hasn't really built up, it's called a thin file. So it's possible um, that you won't be able to borrow money um, or you'd have to buy it. You'd have there's some other workarounds, but really you want to build that file. And it takes about six months to start building your file. Um, if you have student loans and you've been paying them on time, that should get reported. Another trick kind of is if you're young or living at home or your parents are willing to do this, if they have good credit, they can make you an authorized user on their credit card and you inherit their good credit. So a lot of times parents do that for kids if they can, and then they just make sure that they pay the bill on time every month. And then that really ups your credit. Makes sense. Good tips. Sure. All right. Um, let me see. Oh, the other thing is I'm a financial coach for, um, a company called hermoney.com. It was started by, um, Jean Chatsky, who was a financial contributor on the Today show. And she has a lot of valuable tips and tricks. And I coach a finance class, 
but I am going to put her link also. Actually, maybe I'm not because I deleted it by accident, but check out hermoney.com. And I forgot I wanted to add one more. If you're in the music business and you want to make sure that you're collecting all of the different streams of revenue that you can, um, Emily White wrote a great book on making sure you capture all of those revenue options. And the other thing that I would just throw out there is um, make sure that while you're pursuing music, you're, you're thinking of also possibly a second line of income because there's ups and downs in the industry and in the year where maybe you're busy and maybe you're not. And it's nice to have another skill, you know, another go-to talent, another thing that you can rely on. Um, Cause I love, di we diversify our investments, which means we put things in different buckets. I love diversifying our income to make sure that we're covered into different buckets there too. Awesome. Well, let's all thank Rachel. Let's give her some applause, throw some exclamation points in the chat if you're still with us. And thank you for joining us today.